And I will call this meeting to order Wednesday, November 15th. This is a virtual meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. This meeting is being Zoom recorded. And do we have anybody here for general public comment? Please raise your Zoom hand. Not seeing any, we will move on. Agenda item number three, we have an application for a short-term liquor license, Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive, Florence. This is for the holiday weekend open house, wine and malt. This is Friday, November 24th, 3 to 10 p.m. Next Friday, I'm sorry, November 24th, 3 to 10. And Saturday, November 25th from 12 to 10 p.m. Is O'Brien here? I don't see him. Oh, okay. We'll put that off for a few minutes. Same for number four. Item number five, application. Do we have the academy here? I didn't see Melissa either. All right. Although Melissa's, let's see, she is leaving the academy. Um, let me see what her last day is. Oh, so she, her last day isn't until next week. So yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Okay. We'll give her some time to get here. We'll put that one on hold. Oh, here comes O'Brien. Oh, okay, great. O'Brien, are you with us? Is he here here? Hi. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I had multiple school pickups and stuff. <laughs> well, thank you for making it. Oh, sorry, um, yeah. So we're ready for you. So we have your application. Oh, yep, your application for um, your holiday weekend open house on the 24th and 25th, 3 to 10 p.m. and 12 to 10 p.m. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I just figured that uh, since it's a holiday weekend and we have uh, some beer and we could really use the... Uh, Foot traffic to see the new space. I'm going to provide just some snacks and do a bring your own food thing. I have yet to pu publish a uh, a Facebook event, but I will as soon as this meeting's over. Granted, I get approved, and uh, we'll just have a few beers on tap, and it'll be nice to have people kind of sitting in that cozy, warm sort of space. And uh, I figure either people will be out of town, or if they're in town, they'll have people with them that maybe just have another place to go to that may be a little quieter and less of a hubbub. That's all. <laughs> you know, take advantage of it before yep. the year's end. Sounds good. Um, does anybody have questions for O'Brien? I do not. No, no. no questions. Bye, Thank you. Great. Thanks. Would somebody like to make a motion then? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve. A uh, motion to approve. Hang on. Got to get to it. The short-term liquor license for building a brewing as detailed in item three on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Uh, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Great. Then we have you again next, O'Brien. Then we have a request to rescind a previously approved short-term wine and malt liquor license, Building 8 Brewing. And this would have been October 14th from 12 to 8 p.m. for a full pour Saturday at 320 Riverside Drive in Florence. And you ended up not having the event? Yes, unfortunately, we uh, sort of had a little lapse in product availability and really uh, didn't foresee it and wasn't able to really have anything go on. And uh, it was uh, disappointing. And actually, the weather ended up not being so great either. But uh, yeah, we we honestly just didn't have product to be able to sell. We had kind of sold through a bunch of stuff and just there was nothing really of able to put on tap or anything. So we've had a big up and down sort of summer with uh, availability and some material handling, material gaining issues and such. So, but no, we definitely did not have anything. So. Okay. Any questions from Helen or Jennifer? I guess, not. I mean, so that's something that you realized when in relation to, to the event date. Uh, it just kind of came up that we realized that we didn't have product and, um, I'm not sure when I applied for that, but I think it was far, I think it was in September. And when the thing came around, I just realized that it just, just wasn't going to happen. And, uh, 
there wasn't really any draw. We didn't have a specialty put out that we thought we were going to have, and it just uh, kind of fizzled out. It was definitely days before it happened. We realized that it just wasn't going to fly, and um, it was unfortunate because we could have, if we had had something to sell, it would have been great, but we've, we've had really uh, supply issues all summer and into the fall. Uh, not very common. Normally, we would have something, and this time we just didn't really have anything to sell. Um, Oktoberfest on the 30th kind of cleared us out, and we didn't have anything like we thought we would and weren't able to produce another beer that we thought we'd have as well. So um, not something that was very uh, easy to do, but we just it just didn't happen. So and we kind of knew that, so a little bit ahead of time. Okay, so you essentially canceled it in advance of the event happening. Oh, yo, oh, no, definitely, yeah, it, it, it definitely was just this is not going to happen. After the we had our event on the thirtieth, and I think I had applied for it when I applied for that because I don't know if the hearing, I don't know if it happened that seventh or not. I'm, not, I'm not, I honestly, I'm not sure. I kind of saw this on the agenda, and I was like, oh yeah, we never did have that, and uh, but it was definitely nothing that was uh, going to happen you know uh advanced of that it wasn't just that day we were like oh it, it wasn't canceled yeah, yeah, due to yeah. weather or anything it just was like we knew the weekend before that it just there was nothing uh we've honestly had a, a hard we've had uh this summer we've had beer and no cans to put it in or we've had cans and no beer to put in the cans and we've had like you know a few issues with that going and uh, moving ahead hopefully things will be getting a little bit better so but yeah we, you know, yeah sure a bumpy ride yeah, um, yeah. So. Again, I, yeah. I was just, I just wanted to double check and just make sure it wasn't one of those. Oh, nobody showed up, kind of. Thing. Oh no, <laughs> like, no, definitely like not. No. So as was, long as you, yeah, yeah just didn't no, have I, it, you canceled yeah, it. No, I, it was actually my birthday yeah. weekend, and I had the day cleared, and we weren't going to do anything that day, even though we were talking about maybe celebrating on that Saturday, and we just never ended up doing it. My birthday was the Tuesday on the seventeenth or whatever. Yeah, and. uh no, it was definitely not that. I wouldn't do that. I would yeah, yeah, suck no. it up, you know. <laughs> you know, if Let's it rained, I'm not going to cancel. Oh, it's rainy. We're going to cancel. No, it was definitely ahead of time. Okay. We knew, you know. So if it were to happen again, just shoot Annie an email so she can. Okay. For her file. Yeah, I I think there was. I'm not sure, Annie, if that was the time that I had applied for. Was that the lost email situation where I got an out of office? Yeah, you that, never got the email. I think that was separate because I I didn't that know about this event not happening until okay. after the fact. Right. Yeah, I'll have to I'll check, but I I thought I I uh, I feel like for some reason it was in that mix, but um, I can look back and see if you guys want to table it till next hearing. That's fine with me. I don't I don't have a problem yeah. moving forward with approving. Yep. Rescinding yeah, there wasn't. Yeah, I mean, there it's happened with the Academy in the past yeah. where something came up and they notified us in advance. And so if we have advanced yeah. interest, then that's... There was an issue where I had sent Andy an email about a possible, um, uh, where we was looking to get something on an agenda. And um, I got an out of office and said it would be looked at on Monday. And then I noticed that I wasn't on the agenda on Wednesday. And I got the out of office reply from my email, but she had never received the email. But I'm not sure if that's the same time or not. Um, might have been a different circumstance. I think it maybe was later um, for this one or whatever. But okay. Any, oh yeah, it was. It was. I think it was regarding the an event on the eighth of November for that Greenfield Savings Bank. Um, yeah. That didn't quite make that agenda that first week in October. But I'm not sure. I apologize. But yeah, okay. I will for sure reach out again in the future and uh, um, not just uh, not let it happen. But I'll also go through because. Thought I would have notified, you know, about it. So, um, Jennifer and Helen, are you guys comfortable with rescinding it? Or, where I am, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, okay, I'm comfortable with the rescission, yeah, okay. Well, then, is okay. there a motion, please? Okay, I'll make a motion to rescind the previously approved short term wine and malt liquor license for building a brewing as detailed in item four on the agenda. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, O'Brien. All right. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Okay. Has the Academy Bye. joined us? No, I don't see her. Okay. Um, this event is in three days. Yeah. 
Okay, hopefully she arrives. Item number six, application for a short-term liquor license for Country Hyundai Incorporated, 347 King Street, Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, 12 to 5 p.m. This is for a festival of trees to benefit the Northampton Rotary Club, and it is a wine and malt license being sought. And do we have anybody here? Oh, we do. Yes. Excellent. Hello. Hello, this is Kim Montague, and I know that Kayla um, Curry is on, and I believe Julie Clement is on as well. Um, we are all members of the- Sorry, I just um, got uh, unmuted. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, good. Yep, Great. so um, we're working with um, with the Northampton Rotary to have a Festival of Trees at our dealership. Um, the public is going to be coming in to view all the trees that we have um, decorated by local businesses, um, and they can purchase- um, raffle tickets to win the trees and we're also going to be um serving alcohol um for, for um people coming in so we're just looking for um the short-term liquor license for that day from 12 to 5. Okay. did you guys do and this going to be a tasting yeah it's just going to be a tasting of wine and beer yep yeah we did this last year and um this is really uh the rotary's event and we're just like the presenting sponsor and host for it yep Okay, and this is a, a major fundraiser for our club. It's our annual fundraiser this year. Um, last year, we actually um, raised about nine thousand at this event. Um, we're hoping to raise more than this year, and, and locally, we contribute about fifteen thousand dollars to children and seniors in the community. And Rotary, if, if you don't know, is a all volunteer organization of business professionals. So we're all volunteers, and we're all um, being involved with this event and partnering again with. Um, Country Hyundai, and we thank them for being our major presenting sponsor. Um, we have a lot of other sponsors, including a lot of the major banks in the area, and we're hoping that it's a very successful event like last year. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your volunteer service for the community. And Julie, would you mind just stating your name for the record, since I think this is the first time we've had you come? Yeah, right. It's Julie, spelled J-U-L-E-E, -E, and then Clement, C-L-E-M-E-N-T. Okay, great. Um, and I'm noticing in the paperwork, so right now the liquor liability is, it looks to be just a quote and not secured yet. So I, so we did one through our insurance, but then Julie also did one through her insurance. So I, I just got that. So I can send that over. Okay. Um, and then we are waiting on our insurance to send me back the actual one, but we can use Julie's. Okay. Okay. So I have that. Right. That's a district um, rotary. It covers all the clubs in our areas. It has like $2 million liability. That's the one Kayla will send you. Okay. Perfect. Is it specific liquor liability? What was that? Is it specific to liquor liability? It covers everything. It, um, it includes liquor liability, I should say. That is a question I've asked our district before, but our, our rotary does cover liquor liability. Okay. So I can um, send that one, and um, I have the other one from our uh, new insurance that we're working with. Okay, great. As long as, yeah, just make sure that it says on the declaration page um, liquor liability somewhere. Okay. Okay. Great. Helen and Jennifer, have any questions or comments? I'm the president of the Rotary Club, and I'm abstaining from today's vote. Great. Thank you. Yep. No, so I don't have a, a question specific to the event, I guess. Um, should this motion just be made with a contingent upon receiving the rest of the paperwork? Yep. That, make, yeah. that makes sense. So I'm ready to do that. I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Country Hyundai, Inc., 347 King Street for wine and malt, um, contingent upon receiving um, the uh, liquor liability paperwork. And I will second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? I abstain. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I hope it's a great event. Thank, thank you. you. Everyone's welcome time. to come. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to put it on yeah. my calendar. Okay. Thank you. And I can we can leave this meeting now that we're done, or do we stay on? Yep. You can go. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. You stay with us. <laughs> okay, You're welcome thank to. You. You. Bye bye. Thank bye. you so much. Thank you. Okay, item number seven, we have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of a common victualler license and entertainment license 
from Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated, DBA, Iron Horse Music Hall, transferring to the Parlor Room Incorporated, DBA, the Iron Horse, 2022 Center Street. And the proposed manager of record is Chris Freeman. And before um, we open the, Annie, public comment is before I open the public meeting, right? It's after you open the hearing. Oh, okay. Then I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Is there anyone here to make public comment to this agenda item? Seeing no Zoom hands, we can jump in. Um, thank you for coming again. And congratulations on your campaign kickoff. I've been seeing a lot of activity online about that. That's awesome. Um, we are still waiting for documents. So the commissioners and I, after we close the hearing, we'll discuss that. But right now it's your opportunity to share with us any updates that you wanna share. Um, like you said, we, we kicked off our um, capital campaign today. Uh, we've, we've been able to, through the generosity of local donors and um, as well as the ARPA, ARPA funds were at over $220,000 raised so far out of the 750,000 that we need. Um, awesome. And we've, and we're, yeah, we're basically working through like a press campaign and a, a social media campaign to make sure that we can raise the rest of the money that we can to make the Iron Horse um, accessible and serve the mission that, that we aim to serve. Wonderful. Just to, one, 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 two quick updates, one around um, what we're planning to do. And it's, it was in the press release, but uh, basically we've acquired the space next door. Um, it was the only option. You know, when we listen to sort of artists and patrons and staff, um, big focus was on accessibility and, and better functioning of the space. And so we've acquired the space next door. The intent is to move the bar there, put nine bathrooms in the back, which is three times as many as currently. It's just <laughs> Um, all on the main floor and then renovate the yeah, and uh, address a bunch of accessibility things, everything from the yeah. chairlift, a wheelchair lift um, to get you know, safe largest onto the stage to ramps connecting the space. Um, anyway, so there's there's a lot of things that the campaign got kicked off. Um, we have been discussing it with Eric. Um, as you know, the paperwork's not in. Right now, it, it's it's not an issue for us. You know, okay. we, we anticipate that the, that the paperwork will come through. You know, our view is that you know, the capital campaign will, will make the space what it needs to be for the next 25 years of the Iron Horse. Um, but the liquor license is what will allow us to keep running it for that for those 25 years. So, yeah. So, but uh, you know, we anticipate opening probably um, around May 1st. And so it's, it's not um, critical at the moment. Yep. Yep. Everybody's working towards it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We're excited. I mean, it's fun to get yeah. to now. So I, I, we're working yeah. with the uh, David from Daily Operation. He's going to run the kitchen for the first year. Oh, nice! Yeah, so we're we're excited. Everybody's everybody's so supportive. Of what we're That's amazing. Do. Very good. Um, Annie, do we have Eric here? We do, I believe. So shall I unmute him? Yes, please. Hi, guys. Hey, Eric. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, can you give us an update on the paperwork piece on your end, if you have any? Yes. So, um, thankfully, on all of the venues, we did receive all of DU, DU uh, a paperwork. Um, and I, from what I saw, I think there was a, the next item agenda. I think that that was forgotten in terms of sending to Annie. But we're still waiting and still working um, on uh, the the two outstanding items, which is Iron Horse and um, the next agenda item. There's still some DOR work that is moving forward and um, I'm hopeful that as Randy had mentioned that it's not going to slow anything up on their end and that we're pushing through I don't have a date yet on that but um, I will in better form keep Annie abreast um, as we get through this month in terms of where we're sitting with that okay um, Helen and Jenny I think um, there's a DUA certificate that you're owed that did come in, um, there was one or two of them that did come in um, soon after the last meeting that did come through. I'm not certain, as I look back, I don't think that was forwarded to you. Yeah, um, I, don't, but I definitely don't have those. Yes, yeah, so all of the DUA certificates are um, are now uh, in 
hand. So I will double check what was and what wasn't sent. But when I went to send you an email earlier, um, it looked as if there was an email that never got sent off to you on that. And then the same, just to update on the all of the renewals that you sent to us will be filed. I brought Randy uh, up to date on that and John up to date on on, um, on theirs as well, that all of that paperwork will be in your office for early week next week um, on the renewals as requested. Great. Um, and then just so you know, the DUA compliance certificates, those expire 30 days after issuance. So mm -hmm. once when you do finally get the DOR paperwork, I fear that yep. the DUA compliance certificates are then going to be out of date. So um, we'll update those. We'll update. Thank you for letting me know. We'll update those again now, at least um, on that front, the communication lines in terms of who needed to do what. And we have a direct um, line with the state office that was able to cut through whatever the payroll and whatever whatever went on previous in terms of whoever was requesting that where it wasn't easily um, received on two of the venues. Um, our office now has a person that has been very helpful in terms of sending that almost immediate. So um, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and request those when we know the DOR certificate is coming. So there's no further hold up. Great. Perfect. I'm, I'm happy to hear some paperwork motion is moving forward, but I'm also really surprised to hear that you had stuff shortly after our last meeting and it wasn't submitted right away. Um, me too. It was the DUA certificate that it showed a date of, I think, the 19th. And, yeah, um, it should. The, it, who whoever's handling the administrative piece on your end, if it's you or somebody else, I mean, it has to be everyone else is is doing their diligence and moving every step of this forward, us included. And it's frustrating to hear that you've had this and the update we've gotten is that you have nothing. So it's going to look a lot better for you if this stuff yes. just gets submitted right away. So, so noted. Thank you. Please. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions or comments for any of the gentlemen here? I don't have follow up questions. I'm just, I would echo what you just said, but um, otherwise, I don't have questions or comments. Okay. Yeah, I don't have questions either. Thank you. Okay. Then I think we are ready then to make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Okay. Um, you send that to me, Mark? So, you know, obviously my recommendation is going to be that we continue this to the December 20th meeting, um, despite the frustrating fact that we're still waiting for paperwork that exists. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think there's um, sort of no choice at this point, but to continue, of course, we want this deal to go through. Totally. So we're going to continue to do our part and we'll just hope that the, you know, everyone complies and gets the paperwork in. So. Okay, then um, would somebody like to make a motion as much? Yeah, sorry, we're making a continuation. We're continuing the public hearing for the transfer. Is that yes is, to the yeah. next meeting, which is December twentieth? Yeah, so I make a motion to continue the public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of a common victualler license and entertainment license for from Iron Horse Ventures to the parlor room as detailed in item seven to the meeting on December twentieth, twenty twenty three. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And uh, Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. If, if you, um, we're actually going to have the Iron Horse open for people just to peek in. Oh, um, nice. On weekends through now through Christmas. If, if you oh, okay. Hi. And see those bathrooms before we destroy them. <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but th thank you so very much. One last trip down the stairs yeah. <laughs> through water or something on the floor to get to the bathroom. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to dirty it up for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very thank much. You so much. That's thank the you. iron horse we remember. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.
Um, item number eight, we have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for transfer and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license transferring from 2123 Center Street LLC, DBA Center Street Cafe, the basement 21 Center Street, transferring to Gombo, Gombo Oyster Bar LLC, 159 Main Street. The proposed manager of record is John Piscor. And I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Natasha. Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Do we have anybody here for public comment on this agenda item? Seeing nobody. Hello, John. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. So uh, you, if you've been on the call, you saw the previous agenda item. So is there anything you want to yeah. update us on? On no, your end? Uh, like I said, uh, or as Eric said before, you know, he's working towards getting what he needs. Um, it seems like half of it's there. Um, obviously, the tax stuff is a little bit more difficult, I would assume. Um, but, you know, we're sticking in there. I mean, at least the good, po the good part is, is that the license fees that'll be hopefully won't be paid twice next year. <laughs> and uh, so that's a positive. But, uh, you know, we already have, you know, the three quarters liquor license is what I like to call it. So we'll just keep going until we can get everything straightened out. But uh, it looks good so far. Okay. Hopefully that, uh, like I said, we can get it cleared up by next month. OK. Helen and Jennifer. Uh, I don't have any questions. No, no questions for John. Thank you. OK. okay John. Eric, is there a separate update for Gombo? Um, no, it's the same thing. They're both um, they're both moving forward, and I will update uh, Annie before the month is up so that she's aware. And then I did just resend because it was showing that the Iron Horse um, was sent, but that twenty one twenty three Center Street DUA certificate hadn't been sent. Um, but I just sent both of those over to uh, Annie as we were talking, so both okay. of those in her email, and I'll okay. keep um, I'll keep uh, everybody up to date through the month. Okay. Very good. Thank you for your thanks for your understanding on that. Uh, is there a motion to close the public hearing then? Make a motion to close motion to close the public hearing. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Um, same as last time. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I'll just jump to the motion then. I think so. Yeah, okay, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing as detailed in item eight on the agenda to the uh, December 20th, 2023 license commission meeting. Second. And uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, then moving on to number nine, we have another public hearing on an application for a new seasonal wine and malt general on-premise license and an entertainment license for Sub Rosa LLC at 33 A and B West Street. The proposed manager is Rebecca Mayette. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing. Um, proposed music is local musicians and DJs. Proposed time and days, Wednesday through Saturday, 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. And is there a motion, please, to open the public hearing? Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And do we have anybody here for public comment for this agenda item? Seeing no Zoom hands, we will move on. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Doing Good, well. You? I'm Rebecca. Good. I'm Kel. And how how badly did I mispronounce your name, Rebecca? You actually did it. It wasn't bad at all. It's just okay. it's Rebecca Maye. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank and, you. <laughs> great. And just for the record, can we get your last name as well? Kel Comenda. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, so let us know. I've been observing how beautiful that space looks up on West Street as I drive by. Um, let us know what you've been up to. Sure. Yeah. So um, Sub Rosa LLC sprang from our original business of Many Graces Flower Farm. Um, so basically what we've been up to is we've rented these two beautiful spaces up here on West Street and we are 
um, in the process of renovating the space that we're Zooming you from now um, to be Sub Rosa, which will be, we're calling it a botanical lounge. Um, basically, it'll be a showroom space for our floral design with the flowers that we grow on our farm in Hadley. And it'll also be a space where people can come and lounge amongst the flowers, have a delicious libation, um, and purchase some of the flowers grown by the Many Graces team. And yeah, what else have we, what else have we been up to? We we had a fun big fundraising campaign. We had a grant through the state. Um, so that closed in September. And since that closed, we've just been busy you know, purchasing all the things that we need to, to open the space. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you envision the lounge playing out? Are you going to have a bar set up? Is it going to be dependent on the type of um, evening you're having? Oh, no, the, we'll have a bar in the, in the, in the room, in the space. Um, we'll have couches, lounge chairs, um, some two top tables, um the there'll be a lot of like aesthetic choices made to create like a really warm inviting space for the community um and you know if we we'll, we'll have uh some some version of a coffee machine to be able to offer people tea and coffee and herbs herbs that we're going to be growing on our farm and you know sort of like longer term plans to make sure that we're every most things are coming locally, um, you know, but working with local coffee roasters and, and growing things on our farm that can be infused and mocktails and things like that. So, yeah, we're going to really, we're changing our growing plan on the Many Graces farm, like Kel said, to sort of accommodate our vision for the offerings that we want to make here out of Sub Rosa. Yes. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer, questions from you guys? Yeah, sure. So hi, Cal and Rebecca. Good hey. to see you here. Um, and I'm excited about this. So <clears throat> just so I understand, so is it that I'm looking at the hours, proposed time and days of Wednesday through Saturday, yeah. 3 to 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Is that, is it sort of just open as a walk-in during that time or is this event-based or or how are you setting this up? Yeah, we wanted to give sort of a broad hours for the entertainment license because we don't really foresee that being like, very regular but if we want to we want to sort of cover our bases like if there's a Wednesday where we could have like a little art opening um mm -hmm. you know we want to basically be able to sort of encompass what we foresee being our hours moving mm -hmm. into next year when we think that we'll probably actually be given a pouring license you know based on like the timelines of things and when things may shut down with the seasonal um restrictions and stuff like that so um, we're trying to give like a broad brushstroke of of being able to have you know some of our friends who are caterers like come into the space and and host a dinner um, and you know we could have little elopements here um, so it's really trying to showcase what it is from the design side that people don't normally get to experience in our community so um, but working with you know, anybody who says, hey, like, that's a beautiful spot. And I'd love to have an open mic night or something like that. You or know? I want to have my book release here. Yeah, we've know? already had inquiries about things like that. So yeah. so for now, is it like that? Is it sort of event based or is or do, do you foresee that like it's sort of like a cafe bar or whatever that's open for us for set hours on during the week? Yep. I or think it's going to be um, well. We've never done this before, so I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for for what works. But particularly being in on campus, um, we have a lot of the staff and faculty here being like, we want to have our lunch meetings there. It'll, so yeah, it, I think it is going to be sort of an afternoon to early evening, and we probably won't be open until midnight, like on Wednesdays, Thursdays, you know, Fridays. Even we're like, as we figure it out, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be, I think it'll be like walk, walking yes. yeah. style yeah. and we'll have events every once in a while. Yeah, got it. Cool. And there's no second floor on your building, right? Okay. No, there's there's ba a basement storage space in each space, but they yeah. eliminated the second floor. Yeah. And are you, is your space, did you take over the E7 hot tub section as well? So do you go all the way to the yeah. end of the building? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
And the upstairs area for the outdoor hot tubs, that's not an accessible area for your shop. No. No, there's no out upstairs at all anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jennifer, do you have comments? My only question, and it, it mirrored Helen's, was if this, um, if you were going to have regular set hours or if you were opening for events. But I do understand now it's um, it's hard to plan, right? It, it's hard to see how that's going to play out. So I understand how that's a little vague. But given the location, I do think you're going to find plenty of hosts and events there. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, and, and we yeah, we do want to be regular. We're also trying to find our own balance as we're yeah. like the owner operators and running a, a large farm at the same time. So we have to really, you know, make make sure that right. We're... You have to decide if you have the bandwidth to staff every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right, versus a yeah. special event, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think our goal is like in the community to be a consistent presence, you know, yeah. where people know that they can stop through and have a tea in the afternoon. I yeah. guess like my question is the proposed hours that we that we shared here for you. I assume that it's okay if in a few months we say, oh, three to 12 isn't working for us on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We're going to change it three to two to 10. You know, that that's acceptable, right? For you all. Yeah. If it, if it's, if you're going outside of that, just come in and Annie, would they have to fill out a whole new application or how an amendment to it? Yeah. It, it would just need to be an amendment. Um, but as long as you're within the hours that you're approved. Um, so if you were to go to 1 AM, then, then you'd have to come and get an amendment. We won't. And that's, that's for the, <laughs> yeah, it's actually like in our lease that we're, we're done at 12, but, um, okay. but that's for the entertainment part. We could be open for tea at 12 p.m. and that wouldn't be an issue right, right? Yeah, yeah yes okay yes. okay gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah, yeah. Right, but we still need the paperwork so are the documents are you working on the documents um which portions so, of the paperwork um all the documents um have been submitted for the for the liquor transaction the only the only outstanding documents are um, really, I just need those before I issue the physical copy of the license, yeah. um, which is fair wage, compliance certificate, workers' comp insurance, liquor liability. Um, yeah. So those yeah, we were gonna... are really prior to issuing the license, but I don't, we, those aren't required to send this application to the ABCC. Okay. Yeah, we were going to wait to turn on the liquor liability so that we're not paying for it before we're approved. So that's where we we're kind of like hanging to see where this was going to go. Sure, that's fair. I understand. I just don't want it overlooked. I don't want to. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they're important steps. Yeah, definitely. And right now it's just the two of you on staff. Do you have other folks that would be working events? Um, it's just the two of us currently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the two of us. Yeah. It's a small, it's a pretty small room and yeah. I have actually like over 10 years of bar management experience. So I feel, I feel pretty solid about like starting off slow and sort of yeah. seeing what we, what we actually need in terms of support stuff. Um, right. Yeah. And you're not busy in your personal lives right now, right? So, can we well, play? <laughs> we're not, I mean, we are always very busy, but I will say, Helen, you know, from seeing us every week, we have amazing farm crew, like a farm staff. So, there, we're like leaning on them. We have two great managers. And so, yeah, we definitely have more. We wouldn't be able to be doing this new project if we didn't feel like the farm was, was, was pretty solid. Right. Congratulations, then. That's exciting. Thank you. <laughs> you built that thing, and now you're going to do this thing. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Thank you. But you do have a beautiful presence at the farmer's market, so I I hear that that you're able to support or, and rely on, on your team there. They're, they are great. They're lovely people. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really, the team We're is lucky. everything. Yeah. We're very lucky, yeah. Nice. All right, then, um, if do the commissioners have anything else? No, I don't. No, no, no questions. A motion to close the public hearing. 
I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, All right. Um, this sounds like a fun endeavor on Western. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. We hope you visit. <laughs> <laughs> um before we take our vote commissioners do you have anything you want to discuss regarding the information we just received i don't i just uh need to know if is in this motion does it need to be contingent on that paperwork being turned in or is that sort of a separate issue annie the way you described it um i mean i trust that the paperwork work will be turned in I just didn't know if it needed to be part of the motion I don't think so only because it would sound like you're approving it until we get these documents but I need to send the the uh application to the ABCC tomorrow so okay. that would hold it up so okay. yeah those missing documents are really just part of a a checklist that I mean they won't they, there will be no issuing of the license until I have everything I need Right. Okay. I get that. Well, then I'd be more than happy to make a motion on this. That's all right. If everyone's ready. Yep. Let's do it. Um, all right. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new seasonal wine and malt general on premises license and an entertainment license for Sub Rosa as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Second. Um, I'm sorry. Did that include cordials? Are oh. The application was for cordials as well. Yeah, yes. I thought so too. Um, I must have missed that on the um, adding that to the agenda. Oh, on the agenda. Um, Helen, do you mind just amending your motion? Sure. Um, you, yeah. Before we do the motion, we should talk about the cordial thing. <laughs> Make a statement on that. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, so. Our apologies for missing this piece um, a few minutes ago, but in having a cordial license, the city has, we've, you, yours, I think would be the fourth cordial license that we've issued. And so we're relying on the attorney, um, Alan Seawald, who is the city solicitor's interpretation of the uh, mass general law that allows for cordials mm -hmm. and the bottles must have a say cordial or liqueur on them and have a specific tax stamp so that it's been verified that there's a sugar content that brings it to the level of being a cordial. Yes. So yeah. that has can become confusing because on the flip side, distributors are able to sell outside of that. So they're able to sell from small distilleries that have a certain sugar content, but those small distilleries don't have that information on their label. So there's no way to, to actually know and verify. I see. Um, so if you have any questions about it, call Annie because she is now an expert on this. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can be confusing and it can be easy to um, end up having some of the wrong stuff on your bar because the distributors can sell it. So it's yeah no fault of theirs. It's just kind of a confusing thing where um, we're relying on the city's uh, attorney to give us the guidance on how to interpret things. Okay. Yep, we understand. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, great. Um, thank you for remembering cordials then, Helen. Yes. So, that. I will amend my motion to include okay. cordials. Is that, all right. Great. That's enough, right? You don't need me to restate it. Um, do, you? do you mind? Please? Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> Take two. Um, I'll make a motion to approve um, the application for a new seasonal malt, wine and malt, um, general on-premises license, along with a cordials license and an entertainment license for Sub Rosa, as detailed in item nine on the agenda. I second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Annie. Yes, of course. Thank you, Annie. Yeah. Okay, next we have item number 10, application for a change of manager on an annual all alcohol restaurant license for NoHo Social LLC, DBA, NoHo Social Coffee Shop and Speakeasy at 261 King Street, and the proposed manager is Carly Pollock. Hi, how are you? 
Okay, thanks. <laughs> Hi, thank you for coming. How are you? I'm well. Thank you guys for having me. Sure. Um, tell us a little bit about your your um, work that you're doing. Um, so I started at the NoHo Social in about March, and it w they opened in October of last year. So we've officially been open for a year now. Um, and when I started, the bar was closed at the time just due to staff and um, sort of management it, lack of finding management and stuff like that. And so when I started, I came on as the cafe manager, um, but because I sort of already had the management experience, we just figured that taking on the bar manager position would make sense for me. Um, but because my the owner of my store lives in New Jersey, um, I assume that that's why we have to have the liquor license in someone's name that is at the store regularly. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of how we got here, I guess. Okay, okay. Um, Talon and Jennifer, questions, comments? Nope, not for nope, me. Nope, we have all the documents. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, then I think we're ready for a motion, unless you wanted to add anything else, Carly. Can I? I do just have a couple questions for you guys if, that, if we have time for that. Yep. Um, I just wanted to double check on what exactly the liability means for me as like my personal liability in this case. And if is if we have to transfer the license again in the future, is that something that I will have to be sort of involved in? If that makes sense. Question number one, we can't answer. You should get Fair that. Enough. Yep, you should get that yes. from an attorney. Yes. Um, question number two, Annie, what would Carly, what would what should she anticipate if in the future a new manager comes along? So if you need to change the manager on the license, you wouldn't need to be involved. Um, however, if you are no longer in the picture and renewal season comes around and you are the manager of record, it would need to be signed by you. Um, and if you're not part of the um, organization anymore, then that, that might be challenging for the owners. Um, Definitely. But, and then as far as the liability for you, that there is something that I could send you. I think it's, in um, Mass General Law about managers of record that maybe I can email you, can make a note to email you tomorrow. That would be, and that I can totally look into myself too. And I have, um, I've been in talks with my boss and sort of looked into the general stuff myself. I just wasn't sure if there was anything from, um, that you guys could give me because you're like more well-versed in the like area, I guess. Um, but that totally makes sense. Yeah. So being the manager of record, you are responsible. So if there's any violations, if right. you come in and do a check and there's um, something awry, then you are um, responsible. Gotcha. So, right. And so I can send you some more information tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Of course. Anything else, commissioners? No. Nope. Okay. Nope, nothing here. Then I think we're ready for a motion. Helen, do you want me to take this one? Go for it, Jennifer. It's all okay. you. Okay. So I put forward a motion to approve the change of manager on the annual all alcohol license for Northampton Social, LLC, DBA, NoHo Social Coffee Shop, and Speakeasy, as detailed in item number 10 of our agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Carly. Thank you folks so much. Have a great one. You too. Item 11, discussion and vote to determine the means of issuance of the canceled Pearl Street Nightclub Incorporated All Alcohol Liquor License. Annie, did you want to um, share or yeah, share what you discovered in the minutes for the um, criteria for a lottery. Yeah, so I can just let you know what what the commission chose to do last time and what the criteria was, if that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, applicants must already be open four or more days a week. Applicants must already be a holder of a wine and malt license within the city of Northampton. Applicants must be able to 
put the license to use no later than 90 days of the lottery. Applicant cannot be an all alcohol liquor license holder within the city of Northampton. Applicants cannot have had any of their licenses revoked by the Northampton license. That's a lot more than the three I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I think it was these things. We're so thorough. Good for us. Yay. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, unless you have other thoughts, I mean, I'm on board with conducting it the same way that we've done it in the past. Yeah, I would be as well. Yep, same with me. Yeah. I, yeah. I have maybe one suggestion that you could okay. consider um, is adding... Um, or allowing seasonal wine and malt license holders to be able to put their name in the. Have you had, what, to, what's your, what are your thoughts behind that? I, I just think, I mean, it opens, it opens the, the pool a little bit. Yep. And, um, Someone that not necessarily wasn't able to get a wine and malt, like an annual wine and malt license, but still are trying their best to operate with a seasonal, should I think should maybe have an opportunity to apply. And how can you remind us the seasonal wine and malt license holders, they can convert that to an annual full wine and malt license at what point they can they can for a five thousand dollar conversion fee at any i mean at this point at any point right all the, all the ones that are seasonal so i'm thinking through the the, the inequities around how all of the licenses are handled anyways. Um, you know, $5,000 is a lot to ask a business to come up with if they want to have a year round wine and malt license. And then on the flip side, the folks who have the wine and malt license have already paid that $5,000. So what would the, if, if seasonal. Not wine all of them, because um, the city is allotted as, however many annual wine and malt licenses that, that came that that were given annually they started off annually not all of the annuals started off as seasonal okay okay and do you know off the top of your head how many seasonals we have i'm just curious i believe it's either eight or nine sorry that was a seasonals we have eight or nine and then how many annuals do we have right now? Do you know? Um, Sorry, <laughs> I'm testing you. 20 something. Um, and every all that information is on my desk at work. Um, so explain again that some people essentially went straight to to annual because they were available and the seasonal folks yeah, are the, seasonal the, the quota available. what the city is allowed is based on population and so we're only because of our population we're only allowed a certain amount of annual wine and malt a certain amount of annual all alcohol um but there was a loop i think it was in 2005 where um seasonal wine and malt not really a loophole, it was, I think it was special legislation that seasonal wine and malt license holders can apply to convert them to annual um, annual wine and malt licenses. Does, does that answer your question? No? I didn't fully follow that, I'll be honest. So, <laughs> so... But so, but now you're saying that, but there are, uh, there are uh, and wine and malt licenses available now. You're saying, you're saying that, if, I they're, apologize. They're not, they're not available on, at the onset as annual. They're available through getting Conver a seasonal and converting it to Got it. an annual. Okay. 
So because we we reached that quota or or whatever, basically these these restaurants um, were and bars were forced into that situation where they had to start with a seasonal and then they would have to pay this this fee to con this conversion fee. Right. That's the way that's, around that's, a okay. new wine and mall yeah. license is to apply okay. seasonal and then convert it. Yeah. So as sort of Natasha pointed in, this there's a little bit of a level of inequity just based on timing on on these folks now versus the people who were able to just go right to annual previously. It, it's the same conversation, but but it's it's so I brought it up because I thought oh. it it was my first thought. But on the flip side, we talk about or it, historically there's been conversations around the number of liquor licenses that the city oh. allowed. And then people who bought them for six figures, however many years ago, and then people now are advocating to get over quota licenses, and then those were just lottering them off, so people are getting them for free, which I'm in favor of, quite frankly, because it allows more people to conduct their businesses if yeah. they want to. So is this any different right. than that? But does anyone remember the reason why seasonals were not included in previous lotteries? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think. So. Yeah, maybe it was just an oversight. We don't. Yeah. Think, I just don't want to miss a policy or if there was some kind of a reason. I think it's probably just because it was baked in and how how the commission always did things from that oh. very beginning of people are paying six That's figures for liquor license yes. and you know so yep. it's just never been um, considered. I, also, uh, there's the logistical and practical aspect of it where we do expect people from the lottery to have proven experience with a wine and malt license. So does a seasonal wine and malt license provide that? Well, I mean, there are, like the Pines Theater is a seasonal wine and malt holder and has had that for how many years, like decades. <laughs> also the Three County Fairgrounds has a two seasonal licenses um so yeah it's it's just in like iconic the social club has one and seasonal just works for them because they close their doors the months um mm -hmm. the month that the license is dormant which is um mid-january to april 1st What do you think, Jennifer? It was just a suggestion. I it's something I, to discuss. I mean, because yeah. we don't have a policy around it, so we should work through the reasons we haven't included them in the past, and are there valid reasons or not? So it's. I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, I think we could include it. I mean, obviously, like, I think it doesn't make sense to, you know, that something like the three county fairgrounds, you're, you were using them as an example would be like part of this lottery, you know, I don't know if there's some language to, to say seasonal license holders who are open really only open seasonally, you know, and that's why they have them that they wouldn't be included in this lottery. I don't know that those folks would apply, but well, we could add well, it the the conditions, conditions say that they have to be open four more days a week, which the three yeah, county fair right. is in. Yeah, so I guess we, do we say year round? I mean, just to be very clear on it. Should, well, should we I just mean, add haven't in the past, but yeah, no, well, because we haven't considered seasonals. I think if we were to add seasonal licenses to the mix, I think it's a reasonable expectation that they be a year round business, right. Yeah, I agree with that thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does four open four days a week. Is does, does that con is that considered opened annually? No. Oh well, I mean, it doesn't hurt to add the the language. Here. Oh no, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Or are you suggesting that maybe that's not even that's not enough that we need to put like, you know, it needs to be open to some, you know, someone who's open 
more than well, I guess would someone abuse it, Helen, and say, well, if I'm open for seven days for six months, does that right. equal the same amount of four days a week and more months, you know? It, right, right. Yeah. As much clarity, if we do this, then I would want to condition with as much clarity for that very reason. Yeah. So for four or more days a week year round, I think, you know, if we're not saying average. And I am not implying that any of our license holders right. would do right. that. I just yeah. want to be clear. Just Yeah. 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 Yep. Out of the ground. No, I think every time we do something new, it's really important that we flush out all the details. Mm -hmm. So it's not indicative of anticipation so much as just trying to be thorough. Yep. Um, so if we were to include that language, how do folks feel about adding seasonal wine and malt holders? I mean, unless we, I mean, I don't know if then we make the stipulation seasonal wine and malt holders who have had it for more than one season, you know, oh, and then do we, and is there a logic to doing that or not? I think there's a logic to having a proven record. Yeah. You know, of of compliance and no issues with the police and things like that. How long is that proven record? Is it a season? Um, I don't really, it feels weird to, to think about it in terms of stipulating how many seasonal licenses they've had to have had. So. I mean, we could say for at least one full season. I mean, honestly, what comes to mind, cause I know we've, there's been one, I mean, there's also, you know, there's at least one or two restaurants that I think recently got seasonal licenses, but have been operating under them for a matter of weeks or months. And so the question is, is that okay for them to be part of this lottery? Um, because of this issue of a proven track record. Yep. But then going back, I mean, did we, you know, when, when originally when these liquor licenses were available, was there any stipulation to have having had a proven track record or was it like, here's your license. And if you violate anything, you'll be coming back to us. It was, I think that we did have a stipulation of a proven track record vis-a-vis -vis compliance. And, okay. but there was no um, specific time frame of proven track record but also everybody who was applying at that time I mean we didn't have a lot of new places it was a lot of the existing restaurants right you know and we also want to take these opportunities when we can to think about the economic development aspect of you know um the health of downtown it's not just about our existing businesses it's about opportunities for new people too and what mm -hmm. role liquor licenses can play in that. Right. So, so where, does, okay. <laughs> where does that lead us? <laughs> well, I'm not opposed to it. If they, if we add to the condition of four days per week, open annual year round, I would not be opposed to it. And so in that, just to um, flesh it out. So then if there is a restaurant that has maybe had a seasonal license for one or two months, they can be included in the lottery. As long as they haven't had a violation during that time. <laughs> I mean, do we have any who've been, who who have, what have we approved recently that's been open for that short period? Um, I know like Masa Mexicano is one of them. I don't know if there's others. And, you know, I don't know if he, he wants to apply for a liquor, liquor license. Right. Service. Right. He does. Okay. I mean, what's the reason not to do this? Right. I mean, I guess that's what I mean. I mean, I think like back in the day when it wasn't a lottery and you were applying for a license, there wasn't necessarily a proven track record issue. It was just. Right. Right. The licenses are available and you've submitted all the paperwork. Well, uh, the reason to not open it up, Natasha, would it be to give the benefit, do you know what I mean? To increase the odds for more established businesses. Yep. I don't think that's a position we need to take. Right, that is putting our thumb on the scale. Yep. 
then that that makes me uncomfortable. Thumb okay. on the scale if we do if we're not all inclusive is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Then then that's good. I just wanted to talk it but through. But just to play it out, I think that would be the yeah. flip side. Just yeah. to, to talk us through. Sure. I mean, I do feel a loyalty, but it, we're, we're already in an unfair position because of the cap. Um, right. um, would it be helpful to you both to have an update regarding the um, where things are in legislation? I asked Annie a little bit earlier today about that, and there, I don't know that an update is available, but timeline maybe? Sure. Yeah, Annie, do you have that info? I no, I don't. I oh, told okay, you. sorry, Sasha. Earlier, I, I so. Don't. I mean, is this something that we anticipate in twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four? No idea. I have no idea. I know that the legislature is shutting down for a month and a half shortly, right. um, for their break. I don't. I don't know when that is. I can't imagine anything will happen in 2023. Isn't it essentially over? I mean, when you hit November, I feel like the year is I know, over. Thanksgiving's next week, and then it's, <laughs> it's holidays. Yeah, it's January, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, I mean, I think that, yes, I certainly want those licenses to come through. I, for me, I don't think it would change. It wouldn't change, okay. About how we run the lottery. Okay, right. So if we got them tomorrow, it wouldn't change your position on that. Right. Okay. All right, well then it sounds like we see no reason to not include the seasonal wine and malt holders. Yeah. I think just make that make it clear that it's, you know, a people year round are business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um are we ready to vote on Oh, so we'll be holding a when do we want to hold the lottery for the license then? Annie, does that need to happen in 2023? Is it something we have to do? In or is it totally it, us? I don't think it needs to happen in 2023. I the only thing I do ask is that we do it in person because the yep. over the Zoom is just doesn't feel right. Yep, that's totally fine. Yep. Okay, so um when would we like to do that? I guess it's my, would it be at a regular meeting or would this be a special meeting to do this? I think or we could meet at a regular meeting would just have to be in person. Right. So I guess the question is, what is the time? How much um, lead time did we have last time in terms of notifying folks to get their letter of intent in? And um, so that would determine if it's December or January for me. I actually think that the last time this was discussed was November 4th, 2020, and the lottery was held February 2021. Oh, wow. That's quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah, what um, was our reason for that? Sorry? What was our reason for that? I think it was the holidays um, because the, it was November, and then, and then it's December, and then the January meeting, because since we used to meet on the first Wednesday, it was right right around New Year's Day. Okay. Um, so that, that, I guess. Yeah. So I think, yeah, since we've now moved it to the third week later in the month, I would be for uh, putting it in the January, uh, have a, you know, the January meeting being what, when we do this, when okay. we hold it. If you all are good with mm -hmm. that. I think that's fine. Yep. yep. That seems fair. It gives everyone a chance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And the the meeting can be hybrid. Um, I just I want the lottery, the actual lottery to take place in person. So yep. I would be there, and there needs to be a quorum present in the room. So two people would need, two commissioners would need to be there, and then one could be on Zoom. Okay. Let's just hope there's not too much snow. <laughs> they can get well you'd get the magic of the parking pass right so i don't yeah, know if you can park those... illegally but you do get a little leeway right we need those reissued i think they've expired yeah. <laughs> the one perk right our, oh, our... i never received our... one i've only <laughs> i've only heard you know the myth the legend of it the, the legend of a parking yeah, for an hour 
once a month. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, sounds like we're ready for a vote then. Which one of you would like to take this one? Do you want to try it out, Jennifer? No? Oh. <laughs> or I mean, I can try it out. I might need some. <laughs> I mean, the question is like in this motion, is it essentially saying we're going to do it how we did it last time with the uh, with the additional language that we just talked with about? The new language or? and the new time frame. Does the time frame have to be included in the motion, Annie? Yeah, all everything needs to be everything, included. everything, yeah. Helen. Yeah, I see what you did here. <laughs> I put <laughs> forward a motion. <laughs> Incentive to be chair, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> It's not so easy, Natasha. Okay. You. So I propose a change. Now, what do, what are we proposing? <clears throat> um, I put forward a motion. Oh, look at that. To determine the means of issuance of the canceled Pearl Street nightclub via a lottery that will be held in person at the January 2024 meeting. And the applicants will be uh, the same pool that was used in 2020, but amended to include seasonal license holders that have a, a business that is open four days a week year round. Um, does that work for you? Uh, or does she need to read all the stuff? doesn't like it. There? <laughs> Only because uh, you had said we use the same pool, um, and that, oh. that would um... so I have to list all the qualifications. Um, yeah, all the stipulations, the re like the requirements of people, um, of the requirements that people need to follow in order to to apply. Um, maybe. Helen, you can take it. Do you want? You have, I, you have the. Um, yeah, I have that in front of me. The stuff yeah. you put. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I apologize, Helen. No, that's okay. No, this is a this is a very involved one. So, um, uh, I'll make a motion that the means of issuance for the canceled Pearl Street Nightclub Inc. all alcohol liquor license um, is issued in lottery format at our January 2024 meeting uh, with the following criteria for people who will be included. Applicants must already be a holder of a wine and malt license or a seasonal wine and malt license through the city of Northampton. Applicants must be already opened for four or more days a week year round and will continue to be. Applicants must be able to put the license to use no later than 90 days after the lottery. Applicant cannot be an all alcohol liquor license holder within the city of Northampton and applicants cannot have had any of their licenses revoked by the Northampton License Commission. Is that, oh, and uh, no, I think we got the 90 days. Uh, one to two months. What's the one to two months? Um, of operation, was that a thing? No, I think we didn't, I just, we no. didn't restrict the- Okay. We just said all seasonal as long as they're operating year round. Okay. I think I got it. Does that work? So I second. I hope so. Um, <laughs> Are you good, Annie? Is that... Yes. Yep. Um, uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Moving forward, item 12, we have the report from the building commissioner on annual liquor license inspections. And Annie sent us a letter. And Annie, do we still have somebody here from the building department? Yeah, Kevin, is that you? That's me, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't expecting you to be here, but if you 
do you want to give the report or should I read it for the record or do you have other things to add? So I've only done five restaurants for inspections. Jonathan's done the rest of them. Okay. Um, Four out of the five that I did pass last Wednesday, one did not. They have some items to fix. Okay. Um, okay. Let, so I guess I, I'll read um, the building commissioner's letter for the record. Natasha, does that work? Yep. So as of November 13th, the fire department and building department have completed the first round of inspections for the 2023 on-premise annual liquor licenses with the exception of seven. These seven will be done Thursday, November 16th, which is tomorrow. This year, they inspected 54 on-premise establishments, 42 have passed, five have outstanding issues, and seven have those seven have not been inspected. Um, they anticipate finishing the, re the five establishments that need reinspections by December 1st, and um, none of the outstanding issues are significant. They anticipate that all establishments will have passed inspection before the year is over. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you for sitting here with us for a long time. Um, Annie, is there anything else on that item? Uh, no. Okay. Nope. All right. Thank you then, Kevin. Item 13, we have the renewal of 2024 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents, annual off-premises licenses, and annual on-premises licenses. Yeah, so um, because the next meeting is de December 20th, because we've changed the meeting schedule, um, I didn't want to wait too long to get approval um, because licensees need the 2024 co hard copies in their hands by January 1st. So um, I'm asking for approval during this meeting. And if there are any outstanding issues, I will bring those to the December 20th meeting for a discussion. Yep, I have no problem with that. Yeah, sounds reasonable to me. Yep, thank you, Annie. So I'll need a vote on off-premise and then on-premise. So uh, in what format? Meaning just a motion to approve the renewal? Is that what we're doing? Uh, approve the 2024 annual off-premise liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, annual off-premises 2024 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, and I'll make a motion to approve the annual on-premises license, uh, 2024 liquor licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Number 14, renewal of 2024 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for common victualler, entertainment, auto amusement, in-holder, lodging, and car dealer classes one, two, and three. Yes, so same thing. I'm just hoping to get approval for them now so that when I get everything in, I can provide the license. Yep. And do we have to go through one by one? You can them? group these ones together. Oh, okay. Uh, I make a motion to... Um, approve. Uh, oh, that should say 2024. What? That should say 2024. Oh, did it not say? It, it does say it. Does it? Yes. Oh, you're right. My, that's weird. My version doesn't. Wow. We are. We just slip into the twilight zone because that was okay. Um, <laughs> make a motion to it is. You know, I mean, <laughs> Natasha's in the dark. I don't. I don't know what's happening anymore. Um. <laughs> Is that even you, Natasha? Um, <laughs> My apologies. I don't have a ring. <laughs> yes. It's called a cheap lamp. Um, anyway, <laughs> just put it in front of you. <laughs> I think, 
Uh, but seriously, folks, I'm going to make a motion to um, approve the renewal of the 2024 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for all of the licenses as detailed in item 14 on the agenda. Second. You get away with that. <laughs> um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 15, approval of minutes, October 18th, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? You got this, Jennifer. <laughs> I put forward a motion to approve the minutes from October 18th, 2023, as noted in item number 15 of our agenda. I second that with enthusiasm. <laughs> Natasha? Absolutely. Uh, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. yes. 16, new business. Anybody? Um, the only thing is, the, yeah, I want to have a in person. Do you want to have it the the meeting, the January meeting, be hybrid or fully in person? Um, yeah, why? Or I mean, I volunteer myself as tribute as half a quorum downtown. <laughs> if somebody else wants to join me, I don't, I don't mind um, having it be hybrid. Yeah, I can I can be downtown. Yeah, I can be downtown. Let's do it together then. No. So, actually, we've never been all together. I know. Could we should we have it hybrid so that people yeah. so yeah. that just in case. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. And hopefully we don't run into a city council issue with the hybrid meeting. I know. We'll give this a trial run. It'll be our first. Yep. That's all I had for anything. Okay, then I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you all.